In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and program this Philips 4 device remote control. This is a pretty cool remote. It has a cradle in the back that you can slide your Amazon Fire Stick remote into. I'm going to put some codes in there for you and show you how it works. We're going to make it real easy for you. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so let's get started. First things first, if you have a Fire Stick remote, you're going to want to turn the remote over and put the remote into this cradle in the back of the remote. Um, you're going to need to remove two screws in the end right here. I've already removed them for the sake of time. They look like this. You're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver. Once you get the screws out, just pop that battery cover off. And now you can slide the remote in there just like that. Put the batteries in. It takes two AAA batteries. Put the cover back on and you're all set. By the way, I discovered that these buttons here on the front of the remote actually will control the Fire Stick remote that's in the cradle in the back of the remote. I don't know how it does it, but you don't have to turn this thing over to keep uh, pushing these buttons. You just access those buttons from the front here. One other thing, if your remote isn't working well, it may just be that the batteries are old. Don't try to program the remote with old batteries either. They might appear to be good, but they are actually the whole problem. So if you're having trouble, check the batteries first. So a couple of words about these buttons here on the front. This long button here is actually the channel up and down button. They don't have it labeled. And also these colored buttons are for access for additional features for DVRs, cable, and satellite receivers. So there are actually two ways to program this remote. The direct code entry and the auto code search. We're going to be doing the direct code entry first. And this is the method that is the more preferred method because it's much faster. If you have the code list that came with the remote, it looks like this right here. You can look up your device brand and find the codes associated with your device. If you don't have the list, see the description below, and I'll try to include a link to, uh, to go to the list. Okay, before we get started, you're going to want to pick the first code in the list that's associated with your device. After you try it, if you find that the code isn't working right, like if there's some missing features, volume, channel up, channel down, menu, anything like that, you're going to move down the list and look for a better code. If none of them look like they're going to work, then give the auto code search a try that's going to be coming up here shortly. Also, when I'm talking about programming a code to your device, you can choose any device button to control any other device. They're not locked according to what label is on the button. You're going to want to start with your device turned on. All right, so you've got your codes already. Press the setup button until the red light comes on right here. All right. Enter your device category. In this case, I'm going to be doing a Sony TV. So I pressed TV and then enter your four digit code. In my case, 5811. Now, like I said before, test that code and see if all the functions work as expected. If not, move on to the next code. All right, we're going to do the audio because I want to show you something later uh, for the audio. Again, press the setup button. And I'm going to put the audio under AUD for audio. And my Bose system is 0466. All right, so that's about it for the uh, direct code entry. All right, you can do the other devices the same way, up to four devices on this remote. Let's take a look now at the auto code search. This method will send out all the codes in a device category. But be warned, it can take a while since there are hundreds of codes, especially if yours is towards the end of the list. So you're going to want to start off with your device turned on. Press and hold setup like we did before. All right. Now press your device that you want to try to program to. We're going to use TV again for this case. And now hit power. All right. See this flashing? What this is doing is, is it's sending out a code every time that flashes. That sent out 10 codes. 
let's just say nothing happened, you're going to want to keep your remote pointed at the device the whole time, by the way, because if it's sending out codes and you're going like this or going like this, you might miss the code while it's sending them out. So keep it pointed the whole time towards the remote, uh, towards the device. Ten more. Up. Oh, my TV just turned off. I'm using this as an example, of course. So it was one of those ten codes that we just sent out. All right, to, to go back and do those codes one at a time, press plus, volume plus, that is, volume up, plus, nothing, still nothing. Wait about three seconds between pushes to give your TV time to respond. Okay, there's five, there's six. Okay, the TV turned back on. So that was the code. Now press your device button that you pressed initially, which is TV, and that will store the code. Now, as before, test the functionality of that code. And if it works, good, you're done. If it works partially but not the other part, you're going to have to do this again. And then on the next time, stop on the second code that responds to the TV. And then test it again for functionality. So there's just one more thing I wanted to show you. There's a primary audio control. And what this does is it will lock the volume to an audio device like a soundbar so you don't have to go back and forth with the device keys to control the volume every time you want to turn the volume up and down. Um, you're going to need to have your audio device already programmed into the remote to make this work. All right, so to initiate this, press and hold setup again. Red light came on. And then press the device button that you want to lock the audio to, in this case audio, because remember I put the Bose soundbar in there and then press mute, mute's on the side, right there, and then press volume up. All right, we flashed and it shut off. So that means every time I hit the volume, it's controlling the bows and leaving the TV volume alone. So to disable this, if you wanna go back to your TV, set up, back to audio again to disable it, audio, mute and now press volume down this time and see that flash twice and shut off so that's it the tv the tv volume is back to the way it normally works out all right guys that's about it if you have any questions comment below click on that like button if this video helped you and subscribe to my channel i come out with videos like this just as often as i can thanks for watching